People are saying, why would you build a new system when Tokamax, as byproduct, we produce neutrons as breeder? Produce neutrons at, with what confinement time? This system had an energy confinement time of ions of 24 seconds. The Tokamax and the General Magnetic Fusion Program for the last 60 years has accomplished a confinement time of 0.26 seconds, and it is not even sure that this is correct. We had 24 seconds confinement time in just one experiment that cost us five million and was done in a matter of three years. And we know that for now 60 years, the confinement time in all magnetic fusion system has never reached anything close to that. There was no confinement time and we had this confinement time. So we had to give a physics analysis. Why is it that the, the same particles in the same laws of physics are unable to confine particles uh, in, in tokamaks and other systems? So we have looked into atomic processes, not nuclear processes in a plasma. We have noticed that the Lawson criterion excludes two processes with largest cross-section. Okay, there are two processes. One is plasma destroying reaction, which is charge transfer neutralization, where deuteron on the left, charge uh, fast deuteron collides with a, say, a slow deuteron, picks up an electron and becomes neutral. And therefore, since fa fast deuteron becomes neutral, he, it flies out of the confinement. In other words, it, it causes runaway of plasma. This is a plasma destroying reaction. The opposing reaction is plasma building reactions having both uh, ion impact ionization, you can see 2A, and electron impact ionization. Why neither of these two are included in Lawson criterion? Why neither of these two are discussed in any, any of the designs of Tokamax, ether, or anything else? Because of the assumption that the ratio between ionization and neutralization is such that the ionization dominates hundredfold over neutralization, and therefore anything that gets neutralized is quickly gets ionized. This is actually the basic fundamental tenet in fusion, magnetic fusion since 1960s. And it shows here this ratio of uh, neutralization to ionization is one over 100. It is based, actually, it turns out only on two measurements of, these, of the cross-sections of these two processes done in 1960, and never again. The measurements were done at 0.1 kilovolt and 300 kilovolt protons, and the conclusion is that ionization dominates. Based on that, ionization dominates. The, the ionization essentially swallows all the neutral particles, and this process is described as burnout that almost this acts like an ion vacuum pump. Um, that by, by itself automatically uh, leads to absolute vacuum. When we asked Lawson, why did you exclude pal plasma destroying reaction neutralization? He said, because I assume fully ionized plasma, that is absolute vacuum. It's up to physicists how to do it. Measurements, however, that we have found out in Belfast, done at the University of Belfast, give completely different picture. Experimental data show that the charge transfer, the upper solid line cross-section, is a hundred times that of ionization, just opposite to what has been assumed for the last six, uh, for the last 60 years. In other words, uh, charge transfer cross-section is a billion barns, billion barns. Uh, ionization cross-section is hundred times smaller in the thermonuclear region. In other words, uh, uh, there is a forbidden region here where you see the difference between the two. The ratio, the ratio between the black and dotted line show is, uh, is this peak showing that, he, that there could be no ionization domination in, in that area. More um, pertinent is not cross-section, but reactivity, which is product of cross-section and velocity. And now we see, again, that the charge transfer is about at, the, at one point in the middle of thermonuclear region, about 25 times the ionization, 
but we see also that the measurements in 1960 were right. In 1960, it was shown that CT was less than ionization by a factor of 100, and it is at 300 a, a kilo, kilowatts where the measurement was then done was so, and on the left also was so. So, uh, so ever since 1960s, the, the reliance on these two measurements uh, led to the conclusion that if uh, at 0.1 at 300 kV, uh, ionization dominates, then there is no reason for it to change, but it, it has changed. And therefore, the ionization papers that have been published actually in 1995, and obviously not recognized by the plasma fusion community, have uh, disclosed the existence of an ionization threshold. In other words, a kinetic energy of ion below which it cannot be confined. And we, looking here, we can see that the ions of energies in the thermonuclear region cannot be confined. Uh, on back in that graph, you had the right, yes. right circle at 1960. And the, you got a circle at 1960, but that's a 600, not a 300. The 300 is more at the same level. Ah, okay, okay. It was 300, 300 for protons, but uh, I will explain you this. Uh, okay, the, the threshold here is a function of the mass. It's a velocity. Um, this cross point is a function of uh, uh, collision velocity, which is a function of mass. So the measurements 300 was with protons, but since I reduce everything to deuterons, uh, there is a factor of m mass that multiplies 300. Yeah, I put, wanted to put in the same frame of reference that we are working on. So we set a differential e equation between um, uh, competition between ionization and uh, neutralization in general, and it's a, it's a, it's a simple differential equation. It, uh, it is in handbooks of differential equations. Solution is given, and we get the, uh, T sub E, that the energy confined time, uh, that can be calculated. And when we use the system that I told you, the MIGMA system with the colliding beams, which is in the terminology of, a plus, of a fusion, uh, charge injection, the ions were charged, not neutral injection. You can see that uh, between one kilovolt and thousand kilovolts, the energy confinement time with the charge with the charged in, uh, injection would be in thermonuclear region, say 20 kilovolts, about 0.1 seconds. But going over the threshold, we see the measurements, DC X one and a half in 1960 had confined for one second. And our experiment, MIGMA 4, that I showed you, 24 seconds, exactly fits the theory, exactly fits the solution of the differential equation. So this is the case for charged injection. But uh, tokamaks and everything is based on neutral injection. They're injecting gas. And when you look at the neutral injection, at the ether energy, the best confinement time would be six times 10 to the minus seven seconds. So, uh, essentially, one microsecond is the maximum confinement time that could be accomplished with this system at this energy, while actually the requirement for uh, fusion reactor is to be 3.8 seconds in the most recent studies. Essentially, injecting neutrals was reasonably the time when it was believed that ionization will quickly denutralize them. But now that we know there is no such effect, injecting neutrals essentially means injecting gas and dropping um, the pressure to, te to the 10 to the minus 3 tor, which, which is a poison for fusion. So in conclusion, our paper that is going to be published says fundamental error in design of international thermonuclear experimental reactor ITER and of other magnetic fusion systems and programs. Okay, so this answers the question, why shouldn't we just uh, breed the thorium from uh, existing reactors? Yes, existing reactor never produced, <laughs> never produced any confinement time. Uh, in other words, fusion, it, a thermonuclear temperature is out of the question. Just uh, fusion at what we call high energy fusion in hundreds of kilo, kilo electron volts is no longer plasma. It's an ordered system. It is really domain of beam physics, not 
not of plasma physics. Got it? I'm done. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh, man, you're the best. Well, I'm sure. Thank you. You worked with Glenn Seberg, right? Oh, yes. I worked with, I worked with Alvarez. I worked with Heisenberg. Did you really? <laughs> wow. So, does anyone have any questions for uh, our historical figure here? Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have to say about microwave heating? What do you have to say about microwave heating of charged particles? Well, the, uh, microwave heating works, but at the moment it, uh, it exceeds, it exceeds uh, uh, about uh, um, one kilo, kilo electron volt is being picked up, neutralized, and thrown out. So at the beginning it will be heated, and it's as, as it is, oh, nope. you have removed you myself. No, no, you're right. There you go. <laughs> it's a good question, but there is the dynamics of that. It will be heated here, it will be heated on the left, right? And it's, it gets warmer and warmer, then it, then it enters the forbidden region, it enters the region where charge transfer is going to neutralize it and throw it out. So it works wonderfully till it's, thrown, till, till it's neutralized. And it, neutralization is inevitable. The, uh, these, these just classical laws of physics. Uh, and also they explain why for the last 60 years we have not succeeded in getting stable nuclear magnetic fusion because the existence of this classical phenomenon was ignored. Therefore, all kinds of exotic uh, collective effects like negative mass and so on had to be invented to explain behavior that actually was nothing else but the classical physics. Well, very good. Thank you, doctor. Thank you so very much. <laughs>